Fristiken, yeah? Who is uh, Shettel Eilertsen. So you're, you're originally from Norway, from Oslo, right? And you currently live in Peru, Lima, Peru, right? right what, else, right. what else can you let's, tell us about yourself? Let's go with that. Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm a simple boy from the country. Uh, yeah. I found a, found a girl uh, that uh, loved me and I loved her back. And um, we've been together since, since that day. And, and uh, well, I, I try not to bore myself or be boring. Um, I like making people happy. I like, li like making people laugh. And, and I like a good steak every once in a while. <laughs> Everybody so how loves did, a good steak. Yeah, so how did you, how did you get to Peru? Because I, I actually live in Colombia. We're kind of I neighbors. Was, I was swimming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and people always ask me, why in the name of God did you ever go to to Colombia, you know, so, so how, how did you get into <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to say, huh? No, I, I flew business class from Norway uh, via, via um, Amsterdam, via Schiphol, uh, to Lima and uh, landed and uh, went through the bureaucracy and established myself in Peru. Uh, liquidated everything in Norway and um, okay. started a new life with, uh, with no welfare system, no um, social benefits for okay. being lazy. Um, I've, I've noticed a, I mean, maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm late to the party. I'm, a, I'm fairly young in this platform still. Um, I mean, just, I'm fairly young, just generally speaking, 26 years old. I'm noticing the a mean age of steam. It's about 30 years old and mid thirties, people a little more established than myself. Um, and I've just noticed that those that have been able to, uh, that have established themselves a little better, they've been making their way down to South America or Central America, just, you know, somewhere down there from all over the world, you guys are going over there. So I'm thinking, Hmm. There's got to be something, and, and the motives uh, I've noticed is getting away from the government of the home country, you know, uh, no, no, in some no. way. No? It's all about love, man. Okay, but, okay. But you're, but you're right about one thing, yeah. Um, I mean, we are, we are officially shorting Europe and the United States. Their stocks, their currencies, uh, the old world, the old West. Yeah, uh, I don't think anybody really believes that uh, it is the uh, United States' turn again uh, to rule the world. Uh, I don't think it is uh, Europe's turn to rule the world. Uh, Macroeconomically speaking, with all this foundation, they're broken together and it will collapse. Uh, and you, can bat, you can bet your house on that. And then uh, South America, I guess Colombia, Peru, um, where else? Chile. Or I guess there are some safe havens that uh, a lot of people are moving towards there. I guess, is that kind of just like, that's the next, uh, I, you said macroeconomic. So is that like the next uh, move that you think is going to make sense economically? Is just like, uh, it's all going to go to, not necessarily go to shit, uh, although a lot of, I, I've heard everybody say, it's going to go to shit. But, uh, well, Peru is the, is the, is the mo uh, you know, their number one export article is cocaine. So they have a lot of cocaine money from every single year that they have been exporting cocaine. Every, you know, Pablo Escobar got all his cocaine from Peru. So, so you can imagine coca. how much He got money. the coca from, he got the yeah, coca yeah, from Peru, yeah, but not the cocaine. cocaine. Well, he, he got the pasta and then he, whatever. It was, a, it was a huge gonna, international business. We're not going to discuss cocaine <laughs> in this interview. Well, you raised the topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that, that Peruvians have so much money. There is so much money in Latin America, black money, uh, you know, that account for a big black hole in the public uh, world economy. And uh, they're not poor around here. They're not accepting Islam around here, you know. Uh, they're not accepting a lot of things. Uh, for example, GMOs. All the food in this country is organically grown. For now. 
No, because yeah. this is the backup country if anything goes wrong with all the GMOs. Mm -hmm. This is where you will find original strains from. So you can go GMO in all of the, over the world, and if something fails, Peru is the backup plan. So, of we course, just, it's getting more and more expensive to move here and get established. Is, is it a super progressive there? It sounds like a combination of progressivism and, uh, moderate, uh, and, and some moderatism. You know, staying with what work, I guess, a conservative is a uh, conservative mentality. So it's like a progressive conservative um, balance, I guess. You know, not accepting GMOs is one thing. Um, that's, I guess, that's probably considered a bit uh, conservative as far as science is concerned. Uh, but then it's also progressive as far as science is concerned, depending on which science articles you look at. Um, but then if you uh, look at like the laying of infrastructure and stuff, it's, it's getting a lot more high tech. So um, I guess there's got to be this nice, delicate balance between uh, people trying to move towards the future, but also staying a little uh, safer or a little... Um, no. It's still trying to be a little natural in some extent, some, some way. It's just a simple question of economics in Latin America. There's not enough demand or the market's not big enough to really, this is not the first place they're going to be bringing that. A lot of the producers, at least in Colombia, I'm not familiar enough with Peru to say, but uh, the producers are still small farmers out in the countryside doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah, and that's wonderful. That's, you know, I wouldn't mind that life myself in the future. When I am 10 years older, I'd like a ranch and I'll like to have, you know, fruit trees and some farm animals and a great internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> to make puppet shows. Uh, well, puppet. The puppet shows are made in the studios, I'm just writing the scripts and directing the actors from here. So it's done mm. in the USA and in England and in Germany. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the, just, the, I, I am the producer. That's my the job. The commander. The commander in chief. I can do yeah. with this, I can do with these puppets what the rulers and dictators can do with bureaucrats and the people. And with presidents. <laughs> and with presidents, yes, with presidents. Yeah, but getting back to the topic of you know who's who's going to be the next big world power, it's it's not going to be in Latin America. Uh, no. You know, Latin America's the the governments in Latin America have a chokehold on the development of of free economies there. You know, so there is all that black market activity, but it's all black and and red. You know, market. So oh no, I'm not here because I want to be a part of any world government. I want peace and quiet. I want to be <laughs> in my in my creative mind where I can do something positive and 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 make some money and eat my steak and go to bed. <laughs> and, I just want a life of peace no, and quiet. Just a life. That's all I want. Everybody seems to be obsessed with power and money. I just want to live here in this middle zone and entertain people and be so, happy and, and have a full stomach and get a little fatter every year. So what kind of content can we expect from you in the next uh, couple of weeks? What should we be looking forward to? Well, you should always look forward to what the Roger and Snore might be up to, because you know those crazy cartoons are uh, <laughs> uh, characters. They're always uh, doing something random, and uh, many of those stories uh, the come from uh, the comment section uh, that I in, on Steam it I see or on Reddit too, but. If I see somebody's talking about something random, I might put it in there, rewrite it and put it in there to serve the purpose of uh, you know, a conversation. It's, uh, it's a great cartoon that I love, uh, love drawing and writing and you know, put, I, you know, I put way too much time into it than I originally allowed myself, but it's just been so fun to interact and um, you know, in, in television, we usually make these stick figures, uh, you know, 
and then we show it to the actors. Uh, okay, you're gonna you're gonna stand there and you're gonna stand there and you're gonna have this conversation and we're gonna you know do this scene and then we're gonna turn the camera and put up a whole light rig over there and you're gonna do it from this angle with that background. So we make this little cartoon in before we film so that everybody knows what uh, what their screen is in, on the time reel so that uh, the makeup artist and, and the costume and, uh, and everybody can, you know, be ready for when it is their turn to do something. So I will also be making more puppet shows or more entertain, more random entertainment. Uh, also do uh, more tutorials and uh, technical analysis. Uh, if I don't make any technical analysis, it's not because I don't want to, but I don't see anything worth talking about. You know, it's been mm -hmm. a really dry period now, especially in the Forex market, and there was nothing I wanted to trade. So then I just skip it. So being a trader, sometimes you just have to sit on your hands and do absolutely nothing because... That's that's the best thing you can do. <laughs> I've, I've I've lost money not being patient. So, <sighs> well, you you're only twenty six, you know. So what? You know, you have four more years to learn patience before you're thirty. But then you have to, because then you're on halfway to sixty. Right? Yeah. No, then and then it just starts catching up, and you're like, "Holy shit! I'm already forty five. Where did I get this gut?" Hey, yeah. hey speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm 45 and I don't have a gut. Oh, yeah, I know. You're looking pretty good, George. You've been doing pretty well. Um, so I have a, I guess, uh, I guess maybe we can edit this part out. Uh, but I guess the, did we ever do a third topic? Oh, man. I hate editing. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sorry. Oh, the third editing will be scenario. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. okay. All right, so let's jump back into it. So, uh, Shadow, uh, anything you want to plug before we uh, sign off? Well, uh, I think people should come back to this show and uh, upvote your post and uh, write a nice comment in the comment below this show. <laughs> this episode. Uh, yeah, I think. And, uh, and follow this, uh, this podcast. It's uh, being smart, guys. Yeah, the Steam Smart guys. Uh, thank you know. Yeah, and and uh, I'd like to I I like to make sure I throw out to everybody. Make sure to join the Steam Speak on uh, hosted by Firstikin. He's very generous again with the amount of people he pays for for the room. It's completely open. There is so much knowledge and benefit in that room. I don't think I could overstate it enough. So guys, get in the Steam Speak. It's completely open to all people in Steam. He's looking to add more people. You'll make some incredible friends and conversations in there that you didn't realize you could. Um, so I always have to throw that out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's a great place, uh, and uh, we're just opening up the Spanish room now. Uh, so if you're Spanish native, Spanish speaker, you want to chévere, uh, sí, claro, chévere. Uh, <laughs> I'm all uh, out of this one. Claro, yo llevo 15 años viviendo en Colombia, 22 en Latinoamérica, sí. Uh, so, so then you can uh, bring uh, your Latino friends uh, to the Spanish-speaking room and, uh, and uh, have them build a community. Uh, we have Venezuelans that are kind of living in a strict communism, but they got the internet and, uh, and it's a great way to talk with them. Um, you have, of course, the Spanish uh, community in Europe that should be able to come. The community doesn't create itself, so uh, we need Spanish native people to come and actually fill up the room and start talking. Uh, got music playing in there. Uh, we can have radio output so that the whole world can listen to you if you want to. Um, haven't done that yet since since we're just starting up, but we can do we can do all that uh, later. Awesome. Um, just want people to to survive and thrive and and connect and talk without being afraid of. You know, you don't even need to use your Steam name 
if you if you don't want to, you can just call yourself something else, you know, and and don't be afraid to speak your your true mind about about what you are really uh, really about. Yeah, I mean, if if you if you have something you really want to talk about that has been on your mind, but you don't want to bring it up in a steamy chat, or you know, you're afraid of you know people going to flag you or something. Um, come to Steam Speak. Uh, you are as anonymous as you want to be, and right. uh, your voice will be heard by uh, many people. Many people. So, how do they find the Steam Speak? Just that dot com. Steam. S T E M speak dot com. Okay, excellent. And the, uh, and uh, connect to it on Team Speak. So it's T S dot. Uh, steamspeak.com exactly yeah. all right excellent well thank you Shuttle Eilertsen at uh, for sticking thanks for being our guest we really appreciate it it was a great, great. Uh, yeah. conversation yeah and thanks everyone for listening be sure to ask us a question at steamit.chat on the steam smart podcast channel give us a review on iTunes at steamsmart.com slash review you're listening to our audio only feed you can upvote this on steamit.com at steamsmart.com slash 10 that's the number 10 uh and join us as a co-host and everybody is welcome for the next letting off steam uh every thursday at 9 30 p.m new york have a great day <laughs>